Hello, and welcome to Beat the Nation, SATS, week one, with me, Mr. Barton. Now, what is Beat the Nation? Well, basically, thousands of year six students around the country have sat a quiz um, in preparation for their SATS exam. And what I've done is I've looked at the data and I found the three worst answered questions in this quiz. And here they are in front of you now. And I'm gonna give you five challenges. First, can you get each of these questions right? Because thousands of students couldn't. Second, out of those three questions, what do you reckon's the worst answered question? And then thirdly, do you reckon you can find the most popular choice of wrong answer for each of those questions? And now it starts to get really tricky because once you've predicted what each of those most popular wrong answers are, why might students have chosen them? And then finally, how would you help them? How would you help them understand what the correct way of doing the question is? So what I suggest you do is you pause the video now and you work your way through those five questions, thinking hard about these tricky questions that students have struggled with. And when you're ready and you've got your answers, unpause it and we'll go through them together. Okay, are you back? Right, here we go then. Let's take a look at this. So to build up a bit of drama, I'll do this in reverse order. So the least worst answered question out of these three is this question here. A question all about counters and fractions. So let's take a quick look at this. So we've got a box contains 120 counters. They're red or blue and three fifths of the counters are red. And the question is, how many red counters are there? Okay, that doesn't seem too bad. So I think we need to work out what is three fifths of 120 because three fifths of the counters are red and we wanna know how many red counters there are. Okay, so a nice way to do this is first think about what one fifth is. So what's one fifth of 120? Well, we've got to split 120 into five equal parts. So essentially we need to do 120 divided by five. Now there are lots of different ways of dividing by five. You can do bus stop, you can try and do it in your head. But my favorite way is to say that to divide by five, you do divide it by 10 and then double your answer times it by two. And I'm quite good at dividing by 10 because 120 divided by 10 is 12 and 12 times by two is gonna give me 24. So wait a minute, does that mean the correct answer is B, 24? Well, no, because I need three fifths. So if one fifth is equal to 24, then three fifths is gonna be equal to three times 24. And should we see if we can do this in our head? Three lots of four are 12, three lots of 20 are 60, and 60 plus 12, I think gives me 72. So I'm going for the correct answer to this is A, 72. Let's see. So here are the results. Yeah, good news, A, correct. 61% of students got that correct. But that's quite a lot of students who didn't get this question right. And indeed, look at the most popular wrong answer is C, which is 60. 14% of students thought the correct answer to this question was C, 60. So here's the challenge, where does that come from? Why might a student think the answer to this question is 60? Do you think you know? Well, let me show you a student explanation. Here it is. I think the answer is C because one fifth is 20%, two fifths is 40%, so all you do is add another 20, which is 60. And I know three fifths is 60% as a percentage. So here you go, what's this student done? They've realized that three fifths is equal to 60%, but that's not what the question's asking. The question's asking what's three fifths of 120? So there you go. All right, so what was the second least worst answered question? It was this question here. What fraction of this shape is not shaded? Give your answer in its simplest form. Okay, so let's take a look at this. So first off, this is gonna be a fraction. And with a fraction, we've got a denominator and we've got a numerator. So let's get both of these right first. So let's think about our denominator. This is how many things in total there are. So let's look at these triangles. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There are nine little triangles in total. We'll always get that denominator in there first. 
And the question says, what fraction of the shape is not shaded? So how many of those triangles are not shaded? Well, I think it's one, two, three. Those three white triangles there, three ninths. So is that our answer? Is our answer D? Well, wait a minute. No, no, no. Give your answer in its simplest form. Can we simplify three ninths? Well, yeah, I think we can. I think we can divide the numerator and the denominator both by three. So we get three divided by three is one and nine divided by three is three. So I think the correct answer to this question is A, one third. Let's have a look. Yep, good news, but look at that. Only 56% of students correctly got that right. What's the most popular wrong answer? Well, there it is, D. 30% oh, of kids went for that, thinking that the answer is three ninths. Well, we know where that comes from, right? Because we've seen it in our working. And indeed, if you read that student explanation, it's a brilliant explanation about how to get the first stage of the working, but the student hasn't read the question and gone that extra, extra step and simplified that fraction. Got to watch out for that. Always read the question. So let's have a look at the worst answered one. And it is this one. Wow. Did you identify this as the worst answered question? And can we get this question right? Okay, so what have we got here? We've got two fractions and an equal sign between them. That suggests that they're equivalent fractions. They're going to be the exact same size. So the question is, something over 10 is the same as something as nine over 15. Now that's quite tricky. Now, there are a couple of ways of thinking about this that we'll just talk about. So let's just put the question here. Um, one way, and I think this is the more difficult way of doing it, is to think, what do I need to multiply 10 by to give me 15? Because if I can figure out what that is, so what do I need to, to multiply that by? Then I can do the exact same to uh, here to get to nine. But the problem is it's, it's quite tricky to spot what you need to multiply 10 by to get to 15. I'll come back to that at the end because I'll show you you can do it that way, but I wanna show you a different way to do it. And that is, let's see if we can take 9 15 and let's find another fraction that's equivalent to 9 15 that might be a little bit easier to work with. So can we simplify 9 15 Is there a common factor of nine and 15 that we can divide by? Well, yeah, I think there is. I think there's three. I think you can divide a nine by three and 15 by three. So nine divided by three is three and 15 divided by three is five. So now actually we can change the question and we can say this. Let's see if we can find the value of A, but instead of comparing it to nine fifteenths, let's compare it to three fifths. Now we're allowed to do that because we know three fifths and nine fifteenths are the same fraction. It's just a different way of writing it. And now do you see how it becomes much easier? Because we can see here to get from five to 10, you double it, you multiply it by two. So to get from three to whatever um, A needs to be, we're gonna double it. So I think what we're gonna end up with there is six tenths. I think six tenths is the same as three fifths, which we know is the same as nine fifteenths. So C is our correct answer. If I just go back to this um, up here, you can do this, you know. To get from 10 to 15, you need one 10. 10 times one is 10, but then you need another half of 10. So you need to multiply it by one and a half. So you're trying to think here, what number do we multiply by one and a half to give us nine? Well, actually, if you think about the number six, if you multiply it by one, you get six, and then you need another half of it, which is three added on there to give you nine. So you can do it that way. You can do it directly in your head like that, but I always look to simplify. I think if you can simplify first, it's much easier to compare simple fractions to fractions not in their simplest form. So I think the correct answer is C. Let's have a look. So yeah, Good news, the correct answer is C, but look at that. Only 52% of students got that right. Almost half the students got that question wrong. So what's the most popular wrong answer there? It's B, 22% of students think the answer to this question is four. Where on earth does four come from? Well, I'll tell you what, if you read this explanation, this is a heartbreaker, this, look at this. I think it's four because whatever you do to the top, you do to the bottom. That is the worst rule in the world to remember. It's not true, it's not true. Whatever you multiply the top by, you multiply the bottom by. Whatever you divide the top by, you divide the bottom by. But certainly not with adding and subtracting. But you can see what this student's done, right? They've said to get from 10 to 15, you're gonna add on five. So to get from eight to nine, you add on five as well. So they're gonna end up with the answer four, but we know that's not true. Whatever you multiply the top and the bottom of the fraction by the numerator and the denominator, that's fine, but not adding and subtracting. So watch out for that one. 
Okay, so that was week one of Beat the Nation. How did you get on? Now, um, if you did really well on those, great, you're beating the nation. If you struggle with those, don't worry about it, because as we've seen, thousands of students are struggling with these as well, but at least you've had a chance to think about it. Um, if you want more of these, uh, there are 20 of these quizzes that you can take yourself. Just go on to my website, diagnosticquestions.com forward slash revision 2019 and treat yourself. Absolutely loads of these that you can do and it'll mark it yourself. And if you're a teacher and you want to set these up so your students receive these automatically, then the best place to go there is ed.co.uk. Um, where you can set it up. And if you want help getting your students on the system, send us an email, hello at ed.co.uk with a spreadsheet of all your students' names and classes, and we can help you get set up. And it's all completely free. Okay, hope to see you for another Beat the Nation soon. Take care. Bye for now.